Hello, greetings again. Welcome to lesson two in unit three. Last lesson we looked at the work kinetic energy theorem with a constant non-variable force. In this lesson we'll look at a variable force, one that changes over displacement. Specifically we'll be looking at the force of a spring because that does vary with displacement. So when we consider this is good to look back on the idea of the integral where in, in, with a definite integral we know the start and end point to our integral it starts at some initial point, ends on some certain final point, and we'd be finding the area under the curve for that specific integral. Remember, back to your ideas of integrals, the area would be the sum of all the rectangles underneath the path, underneath the curve. Although with a graph like we have here, it's much simpler just to find the area because they're standard shapes that we can calculate from. Our examples will look into areas that are more predictable and simpler to calculate. If we're given a function, then we'd be using the method where we're finding the area of all the specific rectangles underneath the curve. But this also could be in the form of a de indefinite integral, which obviously would have the integration constant c. Hopefully you remember that. So since we're looking into work done by variable forces, the best example of work done by a variable force is to look at a spring. The force of a spring is k times x, where k is the spring constant. And the spring constant is basically the strength of the spring. How resistant is it to changes in its state? You can either stretch it very easily or it's very difficult to stretch. A good example of a high spring constant would be something like the shocks in your car. There's very large springs on your car that are very hard to move from their equilibrium position. Their equilibrium position is where they're at rest, where there's no tendency for the spring to move inwards or outwards if you were to compress or contract it. With my example spring here, if I stretch it this way, I have stretched it to your left, and it will want to drive the spring inwards back to its rest position or equilibrium position. And by the way, when I pull on the spring, I've done positive work on the spring. I have given it energy which it is now storing. If I was to allow the spring to pull inwards, then I would be doing negative work on the spring because it is transferring energy now into me rather than me transferring energy into it. So just a good review of the signs for work. So the spring constant is also obviously a constant. It has a number value. The spring I just had would be a fairly low spring constant compared to something like the shocks in a car and the spring constant in your pen would definitely have a very low spring constant. Now since the force of a spring varies with displacement, as in the further I pull the string outwards, the stronger and stronger the force becomes, that means that the amount of work you have to supply would change with more and more displacement. The force is varying with displacement, so therefore calculating work would require an integral. So we'll look into this integration of the work done on a spring. It would start out by setting up our definite integral and breaking down force of a spring into negative k times x. Which, by the way, keeping in mind that the negative sign is there to say that the force is always directed opposite to the displacement. If I stretch a spring outwards, the force is directed inwards to try to accelerate it back to rest, equilibrium position. When we do this, I can now pull the k out to the front because it's a constant. So I really just have xf, xi, oops, forgot my dx there. So I have x dx. But the integral of x is just simply, it's basically like saying we have x to the 1. So I'll take x to the 1, I'll add 1 to the power of it, divide by the power plus 1. So the work done by a spring in this case, negative k, and now I have my function of x over 2. I choose to evaluate like so. And we're evaluating from xi to xf. So what do I get? What I do next is I then evaluate this portion into this function here. So I'll plug in an xf where I see x, divide by 2, minus, I'll put an xi wherever I see an x, divide by 2. Now we've done the integration. The only thing left is to finish the algebra. So I have the work done by a spring is equal to negative k, and I have 
x f squared divided by 2 minus x i squared divided by 2. Or, if I want to break it down further, I'll distribute my negative k. Negative kx would be negative kxf divided by 2, and then negative kxi divided by 2. Oops, positive, actually, because negative times negative. So the work done by spring is actually 1 half of kxi squared. Oh, my goodness, I'm sorry. I forgot to put my squares in there. I apologize for that. Minus 1 half kxf squared. There we are. Opposite to what you'd usually consider for a traditional function where it's final minus initial. This is initial minus final, meaning that the further out it is stretched, the more energy it has, and then as it goes to rest, it is losing energy, using the energy as it returns to equilibrium. So, the work of a spring. We've now done the integration, and we know how to calculate it. More simply, when we get into the potential energy unit, this will make a lot of sense. The potential energy in that spring is therefore equal to 1 half kx squared. And that energy changes as you go from a greater displacement to a lesser displacement. Well, that's a fairly simple integration. Again, keeping in mind that with potential energy, when you pull the, stri the spring outwards, you're giving it a great deal of energy that it can then use to create motion. So if I was to stretch my spring very far apart, it has a great potential to pull inwards, whereas if I only pull a little bit, not as much. And as it uses that energy from its final position here to return to its initial here, then it is using that energy to give me motion, or velocity in this case. Well, seeing as those are fairly straightforward example or straightforward idea with the integration, let us try an example, thinking about this particular one at first. Give this a shot, pause the video, and then I will be going through this after you hit start. So if the force acting on the particle varies with our equation below, find the work done from 0 to 2 meters. Well, this is a force, and we know that work is the integral of force with respect to dx. And in this case, we're going from 0 to 2 meters. So basically, I need to take the integral of my function and evaluate it from 0 to 2 meters. So I will take the integral. Hopefully, this will be rather simple for you. Please double check that you get the same results that I do, keeping in mind that you had to add 1 to this, divide by 2 plus 1, 3. This is 1 and 1, divide by 2, you get 4x squared, and this is just x to the 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1, divide by 1. All you have to do then is evaluate this function at 2 and at 0. So the work done is, well, it would be 2 times 8 minus 4 times 4 plus r2, oops, and do another bracket within, minus, and all of these are 0 because it would be 2, 0, minus 4, 0, plus 0. Showing my work thoroughly for those who need a little more practice with it. So when you do this, you should find that you end up with 2 joules. Alrighty. Simple enough, right? All we had to do is integrate our function of f from 0 to 2 meters and evaluate it. We did so. We integrated, evaluated it from 2 to 0 meters, plugged in our variables for 2, and solved. How about another example? Pause the video, and when you unpause it, I will go through this with you. So if we assume the work done an object varies with the equation shown below, find the equation for the force acting on this object. I apologize if you'd paused it before and you didn't see a w there. We assume that that must be it. Well, goodness, uh, you can't just take the integral of this. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So if we think about it, we have work is equal to the integral of f dx. What if I was to take the derivative of both sides? So I'd end up with dw. The derivative on this side would eliminate my integral. So I'd have x dx 
divide both sides by dx. It appears that the derivative of work with respect to displacement is equal to force. Seeing as we now know that, all we have to do is take that idea and apply it to our function above. So if I take the derivative with respect to x of this function, I end up with 12x squared minus 20x. There we are. f equals 12x squared minus 20x. That is all you had to do. The trick being, of course, relating this equation and solving for f. So I took the derivative of both sides, we're eliminating the integral. I now have f dx. I move the dx to the other side. And I have the fact that the change in work with respect to displacement is therefore equal to force. The derivative of work with respect to displacement is force. Then use that idea with our equation and solved. Another example. Read this over, and when you unpause it, I'll be solving it with you. So the velocity, and we're given the mass. Mass is 1.25. No other pieces of information are really useful and given, but we do know that we have the force of the object graphed here. Well, the integral of force with respect to displacement is work. So if I found the area of the curve for each of these shapes, I should be able to figure out the total work done. I apologize, my board is apparently not well calibrated. Keep in mind that all work below the curve is negative and all above is positive. You find the area of each of these shapes and you should end up with 40 joules for the rectangle. You'll likewise have 40 joules for the triangle. You'll end up with negative 10 joules for our triangle here and negative 20 joules for our last rectangle. So all we have to do is find the sum of all those work, because the sum of all those works. Hard to tell whether I pluralized that right. Somebody can tell me about that later. So the sum of all the work done in this case would be 40, 40, minus 10, and 20. So it appears that we're going to end up with 50 joules of work done. And then we have to recall the idea that work is equal to a change in kinetic energy. We know that the object started at rest and had a mass of 1.25 kilograms. So if that be the case, then work is equal to 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mvi squared. I already know this is 0, so that would be gone. So my work was 50 joules equals 1 half of 1.25 vf squared. And all we have to do is solve that. You should find that your final velocity is equal to 8.94 meters per second. And there we are. So we've used many different methods related to how you calculate work with a variable force. We used the graphic method. We used an actual integration. We then looked at what the integral or what the derivative of work is with respect to displacement. It had to be force. And we also found the work done by a spring based upon looking at a definite integral stretching a spring from some initial position to some final position. Thank you for your time.